Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're going to talk about the use of salt in freshwater aquariums. We're going to be discussing why and when we should be using salt, its effect on fish health, as well as dispelling some of the myths. In my veterinary practice, I only use salt for short periods of time, reserving it only in times of stress or sickness. Some examples of when you can use salt include when fish have contracted a disease or an injury, or when you're transporting them, introducing new fish, or in a pond situation at the change of seasons when you have fluctuating water temperatures. When you're using salt, make sure that you fully dissolve the salt in a separate container of water to prevent fish from direct contact because it can cause salt burns. Now here's an important disclaimer, we're not advocating the use of salt in every situation. There are numerous species of aquatic animals and plants that are extremely sensitive to salt in the water. And some of these highly sensitive creatures can be harmed or even killed by salt in the water. So you should always carefully research the species you are keeping before you decide to use salt in your aquarium. Interestingly, fish have the same amount of salt concentration in their body fluids as mammals including humans. The amount of salt in our body fluids is 0.9%, same as this saline drip that's commonly used in human and veterinary medicine. So for fish to constantly maintain this level of salt in their body, they have to expend energy trying to excrete their excess water that enters their body through osmosis. So when fish are sick, stressed or injured, we want them to divert all their energy towards healing rather than to maintain their osmoregulatory balance. You'll encounter various types of salt in your home or at the store, so it's critical that you choose the right kind of salt. Some salts contain anti-caking agents or other additives that can be harmful to your aquatic animals. For example, these table salts contain anti-caking agents or iodine which can do harm to your fish so we don't want to use these in your aquarium. This is a rock salt used for cooking. It doesn't state that it contains any additives but being rock salt it only contains between 90 to 95 percent sodium chloride so it can contain other impurities. Not knowing the exact concentration of sodium chloride in this compound means that you won't know how much you're dosing with so we would not be advisable to use this for your aquarium so here are the two salts that we'll be talking about using we've got sodium chloride in the form of sea salt and magnesium sulfate also known as epsom salts the dose rate for adding salt to the water for fish will be different for different situations for example if you're going to reduce osmoregulatory stress during times of illness, we'll be using 5 grams per litre of sodium chloride. Now, there are some species that are highly sensitive to salt that you shouldn't be using them on, which include fishes such as catfish and pygmy perch. First, we'll talk about sodium chloride. We tend to use this at 5 grams per litre, and this is to reduce osmoregulatory stress on fish. What this means is that by adding salt to the water, it will reduce the rate at which water enters the fish's body. At this concentration, salt does not have any direct effect at killing off bacteria, viruses or parasites. What it does do is that it helps the fish be able to conserve its energy and divert it towards its immune response and repair. Sand plants can't tolerate salt at all. So if you have a planted pond or aquarium, the maximum amount of salt you would use in the tank is 2 grams per litre. Now, if you want to use sodium chloride to get rid of external parasites from fish, you can use it as a salt bath at a rate of 20 to 25 grams per litre. And you can have your fish in this bath for up to 5 minutes. Now remember, there are some fish that are not salt tolerant, so you can't use this method in those species. Salt baths are good for pretty much any sort of external parasite. It causes them to shrink, shrivel and die off. But be aware that there are some parasites that you can't remove just by a simple salt bath. 
and the reason may be that they may have an egg stage such as the gill flute also known as dactylogyrus and also the very common white spot disease because there are parts of the life cycle where they're actually embedded under the skin or inside the gills and they're protected from the salinity challenge. So now we're going to move on to Epsom salts. There are a couple of uses for Epsom salts. One as a laxative and another one is to use it for egg bound fish. So with Epsom salts for uh, evacuating the gut because it's a bit of a laxative and a muscle relaxant we use it at about 30 grams per liter for about 30 minute bath and for egg bound you want to be using it at one gram per liter for up to 30 minutes as a daily bath so this is what Epsom salt looks like you can also use it for yourself as a relaxing bath just remember one more thing about sodium chloride. The sodium chloride that you buy from aquarium stores, also known as aquarium salt, on the back of the packaging, it tells you the dose rate that is added. And when you calculate it out, it's only 0.5 grams per liter. And to me, at that level, I don't think it exerts any benefit at all for fish. That's all from me, so thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.